Hi everyone. So it's my first morning at Kanha National Park in India and I'm about to go on my first safari. Um, I've got three days of safaris in total. Uh, I've just been brought coffee to my room which was fantastic. I'll give you a quick whiz of the room. Uh, bed. Obviously I've just woke up so that's a mess. Uh, coffee there and I'm just in one of the cottages. Pretty simple but quite nice. The bathroom's through there. But, uh, so, yeah, three days of safari. And the main attraction here is our tigers. Uh, it's a tiger reserve. However, it's like going to, say, Iceland or Norway to see the Northern Lights. There's no guarantee that when you go, you'll see the Northern Lights. And same here. Uh, there's no guarantee you'll actually see tigers. Uh, it's a it's a huge park, and obviously when you go out on one of the jeeps, you only see uh, part of it. So there's no guarantee of seeing tigers. Obviously, the wild animals you can't control them. So three days of safaris. So fingers crossed, I'll get lucky and get some good sightings. But either way. Just being in the Indian jungle should be a pretty cool experience and I'm really excited for it. Kanha National Park is situated in central India and its picturesque beauty along with its wildlife inspired Rudyard Kipling to write the Jungle Book. As we drove into the jungle on our first drive, I was excited by every bit of wildlife. Every bird, every monkey, every deer, even the most common of animals I was excited to see and wanted to photograph. My friends were quick to tell me that we would see any number of these monkeys and deer and that we should focus on trying to find tigers and that the morning is a key time for that. Fair enough I suppose. Driving around the jungle is fun. You never know what you are going to see or what is going to happen. The focus though is on trying to find tigers. The jungle covers hundreds of square miles. It is dense with trees and grassy meadows and tigers can be anywhere in that jungle. The naturalists who join you on the drive will look out for tracks and footprints for any clues to their activity. But tigers too will often return to the same locations if there's a water source there for example. So the first point of call is to drive to a location where there has recently been sightings. You might get lucky and see a tiger there immediately, but more often than not you will have to wait. Much of the time will often be spent driving around or sitting still and listening to the sounds of the jungle. Just sitting and listening to the jungle though, listening to nature, exotic birds and creatures without the sound of traffic or city life is an experience in itself. What you are really listening out for though is any alarm call of any deer, monkey or any other prey species. When one of these spots a tiger or any other predator, they give out a distress call which not only alerts the other animals of the nearby danger but also informs the naturalists and drivers of the location of the tigers. So even when you are waiting around in the hope of seeing a tiger, it is still not only peaceful and enjoyable appreciating the sights and sounds of the jungle, but also incredibly exciting trying to locate the whereabouts of a tiger in its natural habitat. It's the thrill of the chase, and as I said, you never know what is going to happen. When you do hear an alarm call, that's when it gets really exciting. 
Everyone sits up, the jeep is quickly kicked into gear and driven as quickly as is safely allowed to the location of the call, knowing that a tiger is nearby. The adrenaline starts to run. You know there's a tiger nearby, but will you get there in time? Will it be out in the open or hiding deep amongst the tall grass? Sometimes it will amount to nothing. The tiger is too far away or you've just missed it. But sometimes In total, I did six drives in Ghana over three days. Three drives in the morning and three drives in the late afternoon. And I was fortunate enough to see a tiger on every drive. In total, I saw seven different tigers. As well as Samba deer, Barasinga, Barking deer, Cheetle, Bison, Wild Boar, Jackal Fox, Mongoose, a quick glimpse of a sloth bear, monkeys, a python, turtle, kingfishers, woodpeckers, bee eater, storks, vultures, eagles and much more. Aside from the tigers, my favourite thing in the jungle was the Indian Waller. 
As regular viewers will know, I am very much attracted to vibrant colours, and the Indian roller was probably the most vibrant animal I'd ever seen. It really is a beautiful bird. Over the course of three days and six drives, I tried desperately to capture this bird with my camera, but the thing seemed to enjoy taunting me and would quickly fly away as soon as I reached for my camera, these being the best that I could manage. Everything on my visit to Kana National Park was organised by my friends at Call of the Wild, an independent travel company specialising in safaris in India and Africa, run entirely by husband and wife Sharia and Danvi. If you are considering doing a safari in either India or Africa, I cannot recommend them highly enough. They truly are passionate about wildlife and safaris. They have over 10 years extensive experience in safaris and are very knowledgeable. I would also like to thank Anvi for doing the bulk of the filming for this video. She very kindly offered to record the footage for me with my video camera while I focused on trying to take photographs. Without her, this video would be nothing more than a slideshow of my images. And speaking of photography, wildlife photography I discovered is very difficult. You have to be ready. You don't really have time to play around with settings or change focus points. You have to learn to anticipate the animal's movements. And you might not be able to get a clean shot. There might be tree branches or blades of grass obscuring your view slightly. Not really a problem for viewing the animal for yourself, but it won't make for an award winning image. I also only have the Fuji 18-135mm lens, which has a full frame equivalent maximum reach of 200mm. So there were occasions when I just didn't have a long enough reach to photograph some of the wildlife. Thankfully our naturalist very kindly let me borrow his Canon 7D with 100-400 lens, which really helped me get better photos when I needed that longer reach during later safaris. This then was not only my first time doing a safari, but also my first attempts at wildlife photography. It was an unforgettable experience and a truly enjoyable challenge. And one thing is for sure, come hella high water, one day I am going to get myself Fuji's 100-400mm lens and do this all again. Sajan